the a not on it, and I have to double check. <laughs> Let's uh, let's get seated and get ready for the next lecture. You ready, Ibu? Yes. All right. So we're very glad to have the final lecture from Ibu Ba, picking up from where he left off before lunch. He'll finish off talking about holography and symmetries. So I'll start by sort of apologizing for the fact that. Um, the things that I at least had assigned myself to talk about, I will actually not get to. Uh, um, but in the last five minutes, I'll try to summarize what the original intended lectures were. Uh, but, but, but still, I think it was still instructive to go through these examples to just understand, you know, like there is quite a bit of math and quite a bit of math language and quite a, a lot of it you can sort of boil it down to you know, continuous gauge field, which is discrete, which is a topological field theory, which you can study and actually get a quite handle of it. And I encourage you that you know, as you try to work in this field, it's always good to have good examples with standard physics language that you're used to where you understand how things work. OK? <clears throat> so in the second. In the last part now, there are several things that I at least want to get, in, get to, independent from everything else. Um, one is <coughs> we had the discussion about the singleton as being this boundary mode for, um, for, 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 for BF theories. So we wanted to understand how does this modify the standard picture of holography uh, in ADS-CFT. And then, I also want to explain a bit about the example of SUN super Yang mill theory and um, how all those boundary conditions can be recovered. Um, it can be recovered both from the field theory side and from some bulk TQFT, which is a BF theory that characterizes all of the different uh, global forms and the associated lines. And then the last thing that I hope that I could say something about is to say that now we have the BF theory, which you should think of as the kinetic sector of a TQFT. What happens when you start to add additional couplings, additional interactions into the into theories, and how we should understand that? I will not get through all three, so what do you guys want me to do? Any votes? The yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> One, go through a bit more on holography, singletons, and how that modifies the action, uh, how that modifies the partition function of what we call the partition function ADS CFT. Two, go through the example of SUN super Yang mill theory. I, I've been told I'm saying super, the super isn't necessary. SUN Yang mill theory and the different global forms and see how the BF theory realizes the different global forms. And um, three is talk about more general couplings for TQFTs and how to study them in general as a, some Lagrangian model. Uh, I can sneak in some words here and there. Example. <laughs> I think this was a bad idea. <laughs> so raise your hand for singleton and holography. Okay. Raise your hand for SUN, Yang Mill theory. Oh, wow. Okay. And um, uh, more general TQFTs. <laughs> okay. So I think uh, from, from the count, OK, the example certainly wins. And then. Wait, but we didn't do rank choice. OK, so rank choice. <laughs> well, the example obviously wins. Okay, so let's so then the next one, singleton and holography. Oh. Or 
Or you could do the one that won and then see if you have any time left. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let, let's do the examples and see where we go. I'll probably not get to anything else, but I'm sure I might not. <laughs> So the example to consider is, let's, let's think about uh, yang mill theory, not necessarily super. Um, super can be included. And, and OK, so typically, we, we pick a, really a gauge algebra g, which is SUN. And the question you want to ask in, in, a, in yang mill theory is, what is a group? Okay. It turns out you have the actual group. Um, you can do SUN, and then you can mod out by any discrete subgroup ZK of where, where ZK is a subgroup of center of SUN. OK? So K can go from uh, 1 to N. Um, OK? And then, in addition to that, there is another label, which I will call P, which are the different global sectors of yang mill theory. Uh, so we can try to understand what this means, all right? So one of the nicest places to start is just the action is minus 1 over what's the appropriate normalization. I have it. 4g squared integral on x on space time trace of f wedge star f then there is a theta term wedge f okay so already when we write this something interesting ap uh, appears in super Yang mill theory, not super, not so. Excuse me, and I, if I say super, for some of us, you know, when we were babies, like supersymmetry is baked into everything we ate, so it's a, <laughs> it's hard to decouple super and the rest of the world. Everything has to be super. So if I say super Yang mills, I just mean Yang mills. <laughs> okay, so, so so this is what what the action is. So F is the field trend for a gauge field, let's say that the gauge field is valued in SUN uh, mod ZK. So what this means is that I have an additional discrete gauge group that is, I have a ZK symmetry that is gauged. Okay, so this is what that means. So the canonical example is SU2 versus SO3, right? SU2, you, can, you get to SO3 by gauging the, G, the Z2 center symmetry. Okay, so when you, do this, something actually interesting happens. When you shift theta to theta plus 2 pi in, 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 uh, in this theory, because the bundles for f are different, actually this, this part of the action here is going to shift with something that, that is like k minus 1 uh, times I think there's a factor, times p b squared, p of b over 2. So what is this, this, this statement? And there is some factors, I think, of 8 pi. There's some factor that live here. So here, b is an element of h2 uh, M ZK. All right. So what B is, B is a background field for the ZK one form symmetry, that, 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 which is the center symmetry that's being gauged. OK, so just the fact that when you shift this data term, you generate this thing here. Then actually, this theory, in addition to, I'm supposed to sum over ZK 
field configuration, right? So when I write this theory, there's an additional coupling that I could also add, um, which is 2 pi p over k here times an integral of the Pontryagin squared of b over 2. So the Pontryagin square here of b, you can just think of this as b cup b for two to first order. There's additional detail but you can think of it to be cup B. And if the cup product is weird, if you were to see this as a form, it's, it's roughly saying B wedge B. OK? So, and there is a plus. OK? So, in, in, so here, now, this shifting theta plus 2 pi becomes a symmetry where you pair it with a shift where P goes to P plus K minus 1. Right, so this is actually the consistent thing you can do. And, and, and there's additional data here, where this guy is called the discrete data term, right, which exists in, 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 in yang mill theory when I gauge this, OK? So the choices for P. So P is going to be an element 0, 1, all the way to K minus 1. Okay. So already, <clears throat> we observe that even though we have the gauge algebra to be SUN, there are many choices. There's many families of this. Right? So you can pick a subgroup of the center, and you can mod out by it. And then you can also pick a discrete theta term, uh, which also enriches the class of theories that you have. Go ahead. Can you explain again why, when you shift theta by 2 pi, we get that term? Ah, good. Because <laughs> this is not um, just a simple SUN uh, uh, bundle. It's an SUN mod ZK. So the nice way to do it, this is something that I learned carefully from Enoch. Well, it's more like. I say, Enoch, figure out how this works, and he told me. Uh, OK. The nicest thing you can do is treat the gauge field, um, so, it's, so it's SUN mod ZK, so it's SUN mod some center. So let's, let's take this to be ZN, for example, so SUN mod ZN. So you can take C SUN mod ZN as UN mod U1. Okay. So they are the same. So then if you go UN mod U1, and uh, you, you, you try to con you construct the field strength, right? So you then start with the field strength of, U1, of UN. So that decomposes into uh, 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 SUN bundle and a U1 bundle. And then the, the ZN symmetry gets embedded into that U1. So you take the U1 and just restrict to the UN. So then this shift, when you, shift, when you, when you try to do this shift here, then this F you can expand it into those two different sectors, and then you would pick up this term. Better? Good. Any questions? Uh, it's an analysis you can do. If you don't want to do it, uh, Enoch has notes on how to do it. Uh, I learned it from Hosa. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you're here. Oh, it's a homework. You can, it's a homework. You can do it at home. OK, so the point is now, <clears throat> if we think about just yang mill theory, a theory simply we've known, you know, all of you have seen, uh, if, you, you can, if you fix the gauge group right, by, by picking a, a gauging part of the center, you technically have this term, and then you have this discrete theta term. right? Um, so in each one of these theories, uh, the, the, um, the local operators will not distinguish these things. But the thing that distinguishes them are the extended operators, right? Because as you know, if you just take the group to be SUN, you have a ZN center symmetry. And that center symmetry is going to act on Wilson line. OK? So, if, so, so we know that we have, if G, is 
S-U-N, there is a Z-N one form act on Wilson line. You can gauge this Z-N by summing over all the bundles of, of this, right? And then when you, if you were to gauge if the group is S-U-N mod Z-N or P-S-U-N here, then here you have the Tooft lines, the magnetic lines. Okay? Which are different set of objects. But then if you go in between, right, where you don't gauge the full center symmetry, but something else in between, then you have a more interesting structure of lines which can be dionic. Okay? And in particular, <coughs> the, 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 the condition that you have to pick, the condition that you want to pick your lines is the fact that your lines have to be mutually local local and your choices corresponds to picking a maximal set of mutually local line Okay, so the mutual locality, really the way you should think about it is that um, you shouldn't have, your spectrum of lines shouldn't include lines that act on themselves, right? Because when it acts on the self, there's a symmetry generator, okay? So the condition for that is what happens when you take, you can take a line, N, and then you can uh, give it two labels, uh, you can give it an electric charge, uh, N. You can give it some electric charge. Uh, we call it Z. And then you can also give it, give it a magnetic charge. So, so, so a generic dionic line has an electric charge and a, and a magnetic charge. Go ahead. Why do we care? Why is this a reversal? Why do we care? The, so Chern Simons is a chiral theory, and, and then we can talk about that uh, different. But, but, but here, mutual locality is just that if you look at tooth lines, tooth lines act on Wilson lines. Right? They, because, so if you, the way we think of tooth lines is, is, is by turning on some flux background and carving out and shifting uh, the gauge field. So that's mutually local from, from the Wilson line that you do. But they see each other, okay? Or, or another way to say it, the Tooft lines are the, are the symmetry generator for the one-form symmetry that acts on the Wilson line. So if you take two, uh, two lines of different charges, and then you try to multiply them, Vm prime, V prime, along some gamma, gamma primes, two, two, two generic dionic lines. It's of course known that the condition for mutual locality is just you want to make sure the phase that appear on the right hand side, which would be the charges, is one. So this is that ZE times ZM prime minus ZM uh, ZE prime is zero mod Okay, where k here would be the zk, uh, uh, I mean, so, so if, if I'm, if depending on what I'm modding by, it's, it's, it's so let's say mod n for the, for the extra line. Okay, so now you can ask how do you solve this general condition in super Yang Mills? So the solution when you fix K, so, so when you fix K, so we can, we can take this to be K, um, is that the, for each one of those sectors, the spectrum of lines can be labeled as 
L of, of, of the lines labeled by two integers k and p. So this is how p is going to appear. It's the uh, e, the m is equal to e times k plus m times p uh, k prime mod n. OK, so let me explain here. OK, so the, so, the, so, the, so the lattice of lines are given here, where E is the electric, is what you, you can call it an electric charge. And M is the magnetic charge. And they are integral. Okay, so 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 the, the the integral. You could see that if you take any two choices of those lines, they will satisfy this condition here. Right? You can just see it by eye. So 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 where, so again, there is k and k prime. It's just the fact that over here, if I pick a k, I have k prime, which is n over k. Right. So this is where k prime comes from. It's just a dual group. So then you could ask, what is the symmetry that's actually acting on this? Um, let's see. Hmm? K only makes sense when it's a multiple, when, it, when it's a divisor of n. So K, so, so it's the same choice that I was making. So I'm assuming n uh, is factorized to K times K prime. Yeah, thanks. It's a gauge field. It's, not a, it's, it's a gauge field for the U1. So it's, because it's summed over, it's gauged. Yeah, yeah. It's, so I said as I, here I said it as a background, but it's, it's, it, when I include it in the action, if I gauge the zk, it's actually summed over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the symmetry that's acting here, right? So first you have the electric sector, which is k zero part, right? And then you have e, which is the the charge. So this is a unit. Uh, 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 Wilson line. So this is acted upon by Z, G, one form, by Z, K prime, right? Which is this piece that rotates, that acts on this. And then you have a second piece, which is a piece that acts on the dynamic part, right? So it's clear that in that piece, if, 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 P is zero, this should be zk. Right? If P is zero, then 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 if I if I look work in a sector where P is zero, this is zk. But when P is not zero, the answer is actually n divided by G C D of of uh, k comma. And divided by GCD of k comma. Okay? So this is the obvious part of the group that's present. But then we have also an, an identification of some of them, which is that if I take uh, P times k, k0 plus um, k times Pm. P k prime, this is zero mod n. Right? So you have this identification here. 
And what this identification is that is removes an overall factor, which is z of n. Let me make sure I get this correctly. Sorry, this is k prime. Z of k prime mod uh, GCD of k prime k, k prime p. OK? And this you can clean up to simply be uh, z n over GCD of k, k prime p times z n, not n, of z of g c d of k, k prime p. This is the one form symmetry that will act on Yang mill theory when I pick the general global. Oh, why? So wh because you, you have a further identification here. It, it just means that if you look at the Z, K um, operators, some of them gets trivialized by this identification. That's why. And then you, you, you reduce to the GCD. OK, so, so, so here already you see there is a rather rich structure um, that has to do with the global structure of, of, of yang mill theory, right? First, the group is, is, is some SUN mod ZK, and then there is this further label of PSUN. Uh, in fact, you can, all of these groups you can realize, and, and since obviously you see that this involves the theta term, so super yang mill, yang mill theory has an action of f duality which acts on the tau parameter, right? And when that when that acts, it can permute these different global global structures. So there is a lot of interesting physics to understand even how that f duality acts, but I will not say much about it because it's a bit orthogonal to where we want to go. So there is a rich the global structure is interesting, and the structure of line the lattice of line operators is also very interesting and rich. Um, and, and you know, this is not something that is just obvious that you will just go and, from Yang theory and just read off, right? And the idea is that all of this can actually be recovered by thinking about this bulk picture, okay? And that's what we will try to do now. Okay, so the, the idea is we go back to this picture of ours here. So in the boundary, we have uh, yang mill theory, pure yang mill theory. And in the bulk, there is some TQFT that characterizes the, this symmetry structure. Which gives symmetry structure. Okay. And that bulk TQFT is given by BF theory, this specific BF theory, SUN times, uh, now I'll use the standard notation, BDC, where this is a one form two form, and this is also a two form, OK? OK, so already, since we spent the last couple of lectures 
thinking about the theory, this theory, we know what the operators are, right? So the operators, um, so something cool happens when basically B and C have the same rank. So before, you just have the Wilson lines for B and the Wilson lines for C. Actually, in this case, in general, what you have is a dionic operator with N, B, and C, which is given by the exponential of 2 pi i integral on some gamma. It doesn't have to be closed. Let's not put it closed. Integral on some gamma, because we want this to be able to end in the boundary, times n b times b plus n c times c. Right. So instead of actually having two species, you have a larger family where you can take linear combinations here. Okay. So this is going to be important to also understand the dionic operators. So from the morning, we, we saw that there's a the, the, the quantization here gives you a commutation of B and C, where, where, where C is the canonical momentum of B. So, so that means this operator B and C actually don't commute. Right? So when I write it this way, it's a specific choice. It's not the same as the product of the two. Okay? Um, but the, so this is the set of operators that exist for this theory is slightly richer compared to before. We can compute the product of two operators, the commutation of two operators, uh, as we did before. And we know this constrains the boundary conditions. Or this is related to the constraint of the boundary condition. So if we compute two operators, some w and b, and C on some gamma times W N prime B N C prime on gamma. This is going to be exponential of 2 pi I times N B N C prime minus N C N B prime over n times the linking number of gamma, gamma prime. So this is the charges that we have times the, the other ordering, n b prime, n c prime, n b, n c. So this, this part is, 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 is important. Okay, so, so that's one statement. Uh, oh, crap. Let's go here. See, that's why it's bad. <laughs> okay, so, so now from this, from this perspective, if I claim, so if I look at the boundary and I pick a boundary condition, there is a generalized boundary condition where I fix. Um, uh, the combination of some n b b plus n c c, right? So you have an even larger family of boundary condition where you can fix this combination. Okay. So notice that these n's are generalizing the k that we had before. Okay. And the the discussion from the morning is that you always get two sets of operators. One, so, so you always get two, two sets of operators, one that can end on the, on the boundary, right? Let's say that those are labeled by some NB and NC, which have to be mutually, which, which, and then you have some conjugate, which basically can uh, loop around them, which measures the charge, okay? No, yeah, these are just some arbitrary integers. They have to be less than n. But, yeah. 
any integers less than n. Okay? So from like suppose now I fix some boundary condition, then I want to understand what are all of the operators that are mutually local with the Wolfson line associated to that choice. Okay? And, and again, that formula is going to be given by this equal to 0 of mod n, right? right. So, so we could have, you know, set of Wilson lines. Uh, or Wilson, these are surfaces, technically. Set of Wilson surfaces that could end on the boundary. must satisfy the, the, the symplectic structure there, and the B, and the C prime minus N, <coughs> what, what am I, okay, N, C, and the B prime equal to zero mod N. So this is exactly the same charge condition here for mutually local operators. And it just comes from the fact that you want to pick a set of lines that are consistent with the boundary conditions, or a set of surfaces that are consistent with the boundary conditions. Okay. And then you could ask, so this here, right? So, so if, I, if I'm looking at these things, if I look at these Wilson lines, um, okay, this is now I'm artistically challenged. So let's see how, okay, how I can do this. <laughs> What you actually would have here is some line which would extend in the bulk to some surface. Right, you have a surface that's ending on the boundary, uh, which is a 4D boundary, M4, and then it traces out some line, and this is the the, the, the Wilson line in the boundary, which is kept in this specific global form. Okay. Then the question, the next question you ask is, which so which part? Uh, uh, again, so when you fix this, right, it fixes the one set of line that can end, and then another set of line that cannot end, and it will indeed pick out a gauge group, which is that gauge group that we have here. Okay, so the, the mechanics will work out exactly, and then the, the bulk gauge group for the Wilson line that can end becomes the global symmetry, and you can work this out from the, from the choice of NB, and then it's going to be exactly that. Okay? So, and then, of course, you have the lines that are, con that are conjugate to the ones that end. You can comp these are computable. I will not do it um, on the board. And then you have this braiding structure here, which is going to be non-trivial, which is, in fact, going to give you an answer like this, which just measures the charge under the group. So in a sense, the group, you can read it off from this coefficient, from this set of charges. Okay. Uh, any questions? No questions? Either that was totally clear, completely basic, or everybody's asleep and looking at me. So. OK, very good. Right? So I leave it to you as an exercise. So now you know all the rules from earlier. You can go and just chase it down, and I guarantee you, you'll see matching. So that is the example that I can discuss. I'll forget this board now. Hmm? Okay, so the next thing I guess we should try to understand. How much time do I have? Ah, okay. Ah, good. I might get through some stuff. Okay, so let's. Um, good, so now let's go back and close the circle in ADS-CFT, right? And this is related to actually this, this theory here. Uh, 
I hope the holography ADS-CFT gods will not curse at me. OK. Hmm? Okay, so actually, let, let, let's keep with, with Eshu and Super Yang Mills, and let's think about uh, ADS5 times F5, our favorite theory in the world, which is dual to n equal to 4. Now I mean the super, super Yang Mills theory with G is S U N. Okay? So already this theory has a gauge group, or at least algebra S U N. Uh, there are several things we've talked about. We've talked about singletons, which should have interesting physics for this. And we've talked about this interesting structure of operators, which should also have uh, interesting structure here. The first question you should ask is that, does, is it true in the bulk you have this action here? Okay? And indeed you do, because <clears throat> if I look at type 2B action, S in M upstairs, there is a term which is 2 pi i integral of the five form flux uh, wedge, I will write this, uh, uh, the B field, the NS field, wedge uh, F3, where F3 is D of C RR. Right, so we have this term in type 2B supergravity that, that, that exists. So when we take type 2B on S5, we reduce the action of type 2B on S5 to get the action, to get the effective supergravity theory in ADS, which is how we work with the duality. So here, this, this geometry is supported by a five-form flux, G5. I, which is equal to N times the volume of S5 plus its Hodge dual. I wrote it a stupid way. So we have G5, the five form flux, which supports this, which is N times one plus star of volume of S5. Okay? So then this integral is on ADS5 times S5. We can integrate down on S5, then we would get. So this is NS, sorry. Thank you. Is the Nouveau Schwartz field, is the NS field. And, and C here is the Ramon field for the three form flux. Uh, so if you integrate this on the sphere, you would get 2 pi i times n times uh, B N S, which on ADS5 uh, wedge D C. Uh, the, of the RR form, okay? So we see that uh, ADS-CFT does indeed know about this coupling, okay? And, and the fact that it knows about, that, that if I look at the supergravity action in ADS-5, this coupling is indeed there, right? There is this BF theory, which is in the bulk, is indeed a discrete uh, ZN times ZN gauge symmetry, which exists in, 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 in the supergravity for ADS-5 times, uh, times uh, sorry, in, 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 in type 2B. So if you look at this action, there are several interesting things it should have, right? For one, as we just described, um, we do know now the operators associated to this guy generate for you the boundary operators, which is associated to the, to the dionic operators, 
for n equal to 4 super Yang mil. Okay? Any questions about that? Huh? Can you say that so the, so the action for type 2b includes this sector. So the action of the supergravity in ADS5 in this duality includes this sector. And we studied the physics of this sector. And one thing that Im it immediately gives you, we know that there are Wilson surfaces which can end on the boundary and some that cannot. Right? So this is the case where we see that all of the analysis that we did from just thinking about this TQFT, we can apply it now to ADS-CFT. Even though you have a conformal boundary that's at infinity, that's irrelevant from the point of view of the topological sector. OK? So, so, so if I look at now the Wilson lines of these operators, um, they give me exactly the same physics that we describe here. Right? So go ahead. What is self-dual? There is no C2. C, C2 is not self-dual in type 2B. It's C4. It's five-form flux that is self-dual in type 2B. The Ramon Ramon potential is not self-dual. That's duality for mu to be yeah. in in CRR. Good. That, that's, that was the next point that was to come. Thank you. Um, there is, so there is a, so, 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 so T is, I mean, C is, 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 is a five form flux in type 2B that's self dual. Okay. So the NS and the RR have an S duality that's acting on them, right? And that action of the S duality can permute the different choices of boundary conditions. Okay. And that's exactly the duality that exists for SU1, which will permute these different choices of global forms. All right. Good. So that's one thing that's an immediate payoff from the previous two lectures. We just look at um, ADS5 times S5. Already, there's a whole sector, which is this topological sector, where we've known now a lot about it, which is that. It's associated to the, so this sector is associated to the global form, choice of a global form for this gauge group, right? And, and um, the operator associated with them tells you about the Wilson line and Tuft lines. Okay. So another interesting thing that also um, 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 happens, we know that this BF theory also have singleton mode. From, uh, the, from the first, uh, from the second lecture. And this singleton mode will correspond to a U1 uh, zero form gauge field. U1 zero form gauge theory that lives on the boundary, that lives basically on the boundary of this space. So, so we talk about ADS5 times S5 as just um, having this highly non-trivial dynamical theory in the, bound, in, the, in the bulk, right? But there's also, just from the string theory reduction, there's always uh, a U1 gauge field that always lives at the boundary, OK? So one thing you could ask is, what is the Hamiltonian of this gauge theory? So the, this Hamiltonian of um, of, of singleton is fixed uh, by basically evaluating 
uh, the, the to be action. on the boundary. So when we discussed the singleton, when we first saw it from this, from this, from this uh, sort of a coupling before, we, we saw that you could actually add different boundary terms. And when you do that, it, ch it will change the Hamiltonian of the singleton mode. But in the case of ADS-CFT, even though we have this, 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 um, this coupling that shows which is topological, right? This coupling also have kinetic terms, right? The, um, there is a dB squared times one over, uh, there's a dB squared plus a dC squared term, right? So you have kinetic terms. So actually the analysis you would do is a second order analysis with this, with this term added. Physically, near the boundary, this is the term that dominates compared to these terms. That's why when we're talking about the physics near the boundary, we can forget about the kinetic term and then just think about this one. But then if we do the Hamiltonian quantization carefully, all of these other terms, they will contribute to actually fixing uh, a Hamiltonian for the boundary singleton. Okay? So one thing you can do is you can take this action, you can push it to the boundary, and you can compute the Hamiltonian. Uh, this is not an easy task, right? It's, uh, it's computed, it was done quite nicely by, so I've been careful to not cite anyone because if you cite anyone, anyone you don't cite will be pissed. But this one is sort of important. This is from Belloff Moore around 2003. So you can do this, uh, this analysis has been done carefully. And in particular, what you can compute um, is, is the partition function for the singleton, which just lives on the boundary. It is part of the string theory data, right? It's not something. So those partition functions is Z, they have a label omega, and this label omega is H2, takes value in H2, uh, M, Z, N. So what is this, this, this label? So we'll call this Z singleton. So you have different choices for the Hamiltonian of the singleton that you, that, and those different choices exactly correspond to what is the boundary condition that you pick for, for, your, for, for, for your NS for, for, for over here. And those boundary conditions, you can label them by omega, where omega is, is, is in here. OK? So this now leads to one rather interesting thing. So another thing we can do, so in the bulk, we can compute from the standard string theory so standard ADSCFT dictionary, the partition function Z of, 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 let's call this of the supergravity, right? Which would be a function of tau, where tau is, uh, is a coupling. And then a function of various background, various boundary conditions for the various fields in ADSCFT. So this thing here, we usually just write this and then proceed with ADS-CFT, but there is an additional label also, right? So for every W, there is actually a different choice of a partition function. Right, there is a boundary condition uh, dependence. And actually, uh, in ADS-CFT, the string theory partition function that we compute from ADS5 times F5 is a sum, should be, is, 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 is generally a sum, should be some sum over W of the W of tau phi naught times dotted with the singleton sector. Okay, 
So this is the correct partition function. So when you think about now this partition function, it's sort of interesting because the bulk ADS5 times S5 indeed captures the dynamics of, of SU1 gauge theory, right, with gauge group G, right? So this has been established the, uh, uh, very well. But if you think about the brains that generates this geometry, like those brains were actually U1. So what happens to that extra U1? So that extra U1 is exactly this guy, right? So this corresponds to the U1 for the, the U1 associated to center of mass mode, center of mass of brains. Okay, so 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 in in so in ADS CFT, so you have to give me a choices of boundary condition. The, the the simple trivial one is just pick W equal to zero. So you just W equal to zero, then that this is a single partition function, and that single partition function is the honest to God partition function for SUN super Yang Mills with gauge group SUN. Okay, then there's another. Then you have, you can see that you, what you actually have is a vector in some, in some finite dimensional Hilbert space. And that finite dimensional Hilbert space is a finite dimensional Hilbert space associated to this singleton sector. Okay? So, so in ads -CFD, the way you can actually go ahead and pick and, and, fix, and, and have the dual, which would correspond to all these different choices, and to different choices exactly maps to the choices of these boundary conditions. If I want to get the gauge group to be SUN, to be PSUN, that correspond to summing over all the different sectors. Okay. There is another piece of physics which is interesting, which I will not say much, but I will just mention it, but I encourage you to go try to read about it. So this partition function depends on tau, so they also transform in the, the SL2Z, right? So these two guys also have to know about this SL2Z transformation, and there is a lot of fun physics to be done, to, to be read there, so I, I encourage you to go read about it. Another question you could also ask relating to this, um, uh, uh, what, how, so, so here in, AD, in, in ADS-CFT, you can also see um, another way, how to interpret this U1 singleton mode, okay? So from this action, B, C here, right? So if we take a B, B field, if, if this topological term wasn't there, so the role of this topological term is breaking the, the U1 gauge theory associated to B to a discrete gauge group, right? So meaning that if I were to ignore this guy and I just look at the physics of this B field, it would look like a U1 gauge field in the bulk. So then in, in the boundary, you should generate a U1 global symmetry via standard CFT, via, via the standard ADS CFT uh, 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 map. But we observe that actually in the bulk, this U1 is spontaneously broken to a discrete group by this guy, right? So that means this boundary U1 should be spontaneously broken. But because it's a global symmetry, there should be a goldstone. And that goldstone mode, again, tells you exactly if the thing we associate with the singleton. Okay, so everything hands, hangs tight quite nicely. Any questions? It's a lot of words, I didn't write much, but uh, it's hard to, yeah. Questions, comments? Okay. Uh, okay, so on the last five minutes, 15 minutes, um, let's talk about something else.
Okay, so so as as we've just worked, uh, uh, blah, blah. as we just described, we know that so now we have these bulk TQFTs, which will have a Lagrangian that is of the form. Let's 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 restrict to, to let's 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 do just five T, because why not? So you can have a BF term a one d c three. You can have a factor two pi i k. Right? You can have such a term. This would give you a zk uh, zero form times a zk two form symmetry in uh, gauge theory in five dimensions. You can take multiple of them. You can have another two pi i. Let's call this uh, m times something that looks like a b wedge c, which could correspond to the m one form symmetry times the m one form symmetry. Right? So we know how to think about these things now. Right? So you can have multiple products of these, uh, these groups, these discrete groups that exist in, in, in the bulk. Then you can have new and interesting things. You can also have couplings between them of various kinds. Okay? My favorite coupling that I will talk about, you can have, for example, a coupling which is going to be A wedge something that I will call P squared of B. So here, um, I'm going to make an important distinction. I want to construct um, uh, 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 actions that are gauge invariant from the, in the bulk, that are gauge invariant in the bulk. If I, I could write a, a OK, let's, uh, let's, let, let's do some, something simpler first before we go to things that are more complex. complex. Okay, you can have something that is like uh, Q times A wedge F squared, right, where F is the uh, field strength of A1, right? So you can have various chern simons coupling, so you can get a more interesting topological theory. Um, the, 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 the nice stuff, the, so all of these different types of topological theories will emerge in ADS-CFT, right? So all of these things will emerge in ADS-CFT. Because let's just think about in type 2B, right? So in type 2B, um, we have this large family of ADS-5 times um, Sasaki Einstein 5, where the action of, on ADS-5, the action on ADS-5 is obtained by integrating down the, act, the, the action of type 2B on ADS, on, 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 on um, Sasaki Einstein 5. Okay? So when we do this, right, there, is, there are many different places where you will get a lot of different symmetries emerge. Okay? So depending on the cohomology, uh, of ADS-5, you can have various types of zero form, various type fluctuations, which could be one form, zero form, two form, all the way up, right? And the reason why is that in, 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 in ADS, in, in type 2B, you have, you have an F3, you have H3 flux, you have an F5 flux. Um, what am I missing? We have F1, which, and then you also have uh, the dilaton tau which is inconsistent writing being written this way. So I can write d tau or something like that. It's d of exponential, d of e to the phi. phi the, 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 this. So you have all of these fluxes, which in string theory are naturally, uh, uh, you know, high, these are all higher form gauge symmetries in type 2b. OK? So depending on the. On the cohomology of this guy, you can get a very rich higher form symmetry that, that appears. So to just illustrate a point, suppose uh, S5, suppose the Sasaki Einstein have uh, you know, some closed five form, well, there is a volume which is a five, but it can have 
a three form or some two form that appear, then immediately we would we 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 we, we, we could see that um, I have to expand F3, H3, F5, F1 along all of these different forms, right? So F3 alone will give me some, uh, um, so F3 alone, which I can write as D of C2, right, is going to give me a C2 form. It will give me something that looks like a, a, a C0 if I expand F2 among, along this guy and so on, and you have something similar for each one of these guys. So these are going to give you some non-trivial gauge theories in, uh, in the external ADS5. And the expansion is not just going to be in the kinetic term. As we've just described, uh, type 2b also have topological couplings. So those topological couplings also have to reduce. OK? So for example, this A wedge F squared is the, turn, is, the, is, the, is, the, um, is the anomaly that gives you the R anomaly, for example. So that is obtained from computing the action of the supergravity that involves the U1R symmetry in the bulk. Okay? So you get a lot of new topological term appear in, whenever you're doing a string theory reduction. Right? Another thing that could also happen is you have these forms, which are, which are labeled by some Deram cohomology. All of you have seen those. You could also have forms that are labeled by something like pi 3, pi 2, which are torsional. So Greg tor told you what, what that should mean. Right. So when you reduce these type 2b fields along torsional cycles, they don't give you continuous symmetry. They give you discrete gauge symmetry. Okay. So string theory has a way of get, get, getting all of these things. The original set of lectures that I plan to talk about is to explain how this works. And to do this computation properly, now we know you have to do it using differential cohomology. Right? This is why Greg gave to us lectures in differential cohomology. And it is sort of unfortunate that I can't make use of it. OK? So, so, so string theory, depending on the system that you look at, um, allows you to construct a large families of TQFTs, right, which you know are consistent and well-defined. And then all of those TQFTs will give you some rather interesting global structure in the boundary. And it will characterize discrete symmetries and various things. OK? So there is a more so. Any questions? Uh, just out of curiosity, so if I give you a fast disk for gravity without any topological film, how does have uh, like ADS5 solution, for example? So does that mean in the boundary you don't have any higher form symmetry? That's not necessarily true. Can you repeat the question? The the question is if I just give you uh, some 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 some. Uh, uh, supergravity, which doesn't have any topological terms, like in type 2b. But type 2b does have topological terms. But suppose it didn't. So this is what your question is asking. Then, then how do I see you have some higher form symmetries, discrete symmetries emerge? Right? This topological coupling is not the only place where they can emerge. One place they can emerge is if you have torsional cycles. Right? So if you have torsional cycles, then you have kinetic terms that would be associated to some gauge field, but those gauge field would be associated to discrete symmetries. So you can construct some, you can, you can reduce the action along torsional cycles, and then what you, what you would get is things like Stuckelberg actions. And the second lecture, we saw that the Stuckelberg action, you can always dualize. OK? So that's one part of your answer. Another thing that also happens uh, is when we're doing this reduction, you can reduce it where you turn on additional flux. You can turn on non-trivial flux for all of these forms. These are additional integers. And when you turn on non-trivial flux, they will induce interactions between all of these U1 fields that you get from the reduction. And those interactions also will lead to Stuckelberg mechanisms. Right? 
So, so there are several places where you get a lot of discrete information and where you get a lot of different contribution for topological sectors. Right? In the last few years, several of us had been working on this to just understand how to fully characterize them. Okay, so this, this is now understood. Um, so you can do it very cleanly using the language of differential cohomology. Okay, that's, that was a good, great question. Another question? Sorry I'm rushing at the very, the very last when I can actually say, get into meaty things. Good. Uh, I mean, actually, uh, if I just give you a 5 d super graph, and I don't want to do any reduction anymore, and I tell you this 5 d super graph doesn't have any topological term, and I can find some ADS5 solution, does that mean the dual CFT doesn't have uh, higher form symmetry? Well, you, have, you can have continuous higher form symmetries. Yeah, yeah. Right? You, you, yeah, so if, you, if I just have a super gravity which has no topological sector, um, and all the symmetries are continuous, then there is no discrete symmetry. But, but there, are, there are specific reasons why that can never happen, actually. Right? One piece, the, the, why that shouldn't happen, if, if you have this ADS5, you have two symmetries. Um, certainly in the supersymmetric case, where you have a supersymmetric CFT, um, you know you have the R symmetry. And the R symmetry has an anomaly, which is related to the central charge. So you will always have, have to be a way to get this AFF term. It could be the case that you don't get any BF terms, right? But you always will get turn time and terms like that because turn time and terms like that capture the anomaly of the global symmetry. You can have continuous global symmetry and no discrete, but then you have a cubic turn Simon's term, which would capture the anomaly, right? So the way you could, this, this is also computable in a very systematic way in ADACFD via what's called anomaly polynomial methods. Yeah. So, so topological sectors are just, it's just baked in to, to everything. Go ahead. So to understand how to do, extract this top, this, these are papers that I've written, which I can tell you. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, but. But okay, I, wow, we have three minutes. And if, if you do come up with a list of references, could you post it on the wiki? So everyone yeah, yeah, I will, I will create a list of references to, 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 to send you. But, 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 you know, but okay, so since I have three minutes, let me just wrap it up. So the, what I intended to, to do carefully for you is under, explain how ADS-CFT will recover many interesting topological DQFTs and how to analyze those. In fact, there are some TQFTs that you can construct, which also will include non-invertible symmetry. And we know how that emerges nowadays. I didn't get a chance to say more about it. But somewhere while preparing, I thought it might be more useful to give you some universal picture of how all of this works. And, and the canonical example that you should understand as clean as possible is really the BF theory. And, and I think I tried to explain from where it comes from in Higgs mechanism, how do you quantize it, how do you get the boundary condition, and how does it label the boundary data. Once you understand that, all of these other models is effectively the same machinery that you use to run, okay? The one thing that is actually general and important that I didn't mention is that um, if I give you some arbitrary topological theory, uh, so in the BF theory, it was very easy to write down the Wilson surfaces and understand these are the symmetry operators. But in general, you could ask, if I give you a random TQFT in terms of these continuous fields, how do I construct the symmetry operators? So this involves the other part of the quantization, which was the Gauss law. So Ga there's a Gauss law in the bulk, and the Gauss law can be used to extract the symmetry operators in general. I can also include references on on, 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 how, on how that works out. Um, but away from that additional piece, in principle, you have all the data that if I throw at you a random TQFT in the bulk, 
and ask you to figure out how the boundary works, the, 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 the BF was a good example to do that uh, uh, thoroughly. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. I'll stop there. Any more questions for Ibu? Go ahead. Wait, sorry. Repeat the. Wait, sorry. I don't. Oh, oh. You, you. you I mean. You, it, it's not going to be the case that any random background that you try to pick for ADS for type 2B reduction will give you an ADS5 solution, right? Right, so the statement is there is a noble theorem that if you have only the F1 plus, let's say, and the MFMS plus, you find the ADS5 plus. I don't think the stuff that I've told you is refined enough to come up with a no-go theorem. The statement is that um, if you have a supersymmetric theory, and then you, have, you know you have the R symmetry that has to be there, then that R symmetry you have to have this topological term. And in fact, in the ADS5 times S5, this is universal. It, doesn't, it, it will come down in a very universal way because the F, F5 is a U1 bundle over some base, some, some Kähler base. That U1 bundle is always a U1R symmetry. And, it's, and, and that always generates some general U1 symmetry, U1 in the, in the, in the, in the, in the external space time. And what happens? Because the five-form flux is along the volume of, 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 of Sasaki-Einstein 5, then the five-form flux is going to be the thing that generates this term. So there's a very universal way why this always happens at least in ADS-5. In, in other backgrounds, you can also argue for it. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, the, the, the statement is that if you have any bulk, supergravity theory can come from anywhere. So if you have any theory that you reduce on some compact space, you get some gauge symmetry that is coming from just from isometry. The Klein reduction, you get an isometry. The isometry of the internal space becomes the gauge symmetry in the external space, space time. You always get that. In the case of ADS5 times S5, S5 has an SO6 isometry group that gives you an SO6 gauge symmetry in the gauge symmetry in the bulk, that is dual to the, SO, to the, to the R symmetry of the, I mean, N equal to 4 of Yang new theory. Right? That's a bulk gauge group, which is dual to the R symmetry, which is a global symmetry. Yeah, so I guess what I'm wondering is, like, do you think it's possible that instead of storing symmetries in terms of TMP and topological defects, storing them in, like, small dimensions or something like this? It's intermediate, it's, yeah, good. So, so the, 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 the machinery to the, 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 that I thought I would tell you about several months ago would tell you exactly how that works. The, so the thing that de determines the gauge symmetry outside is the isometry of the compact directions and its topology. Right? So, so the, its topology and the isometry is what determines the symmetry of the external space time. In a sense, the sim TFT is coded there you know, given the, the action up there. Well, if there are no further questions, this was Ibu's last lecture. As you know, Ibu was one of the three, is one of the three scientific organizers for what? the school. <laughs> oh, the school is not over, Ibu, even if you're running away. <laughs> So a lot of the program that you've been watching, the lecturers were, were picked by Ibu, along with Xu Heng, who will be here next week, and Ken. So let's give Ibu a really big round of applause for all his contributions to TASI 2023.